My name is Fatima Uygun. Um, I'm from the Govan Hill Baths Community Trust. I'm the trust manager. I was one of the original occupiers and campaigners uh, when the campaign started in 2001. I'm going to briefly talk to you about <laughs> Govan Hill Baths in case you don't know. I hope you do. Uh, we're one of the big high profile community campaigns in Glasgow. Um, Govan Hill Baths is a massive building. It has uh, three swimming pools, a gigantic laundrette or, or wash house, steamy, better known locally. Uh, Turkish baths, slipper baths, about 40 of them where people used to come and have a wash because there were no baths and showers in Govan Hill. Um, and a gym, multi-use rooms, and it was also the home of a number of swimming clubs. Um, building was started in 1914, we've just celebrated our anniversary, we celebrated two anniversaries actually, the start, and the building was stopped um, because they needed steel to kill people in the First World War, and then once that was finished, they uh, finished our building. Um, so we've had two anniversaries. The Save Our Pool campaign began in 2001 when Glasgow City Council decided to shut the building without consulting anybody, but thanks to the janitors and the uh, lifeguards who were able to keep the community informed about the Glasgow City Council uh, plans, we um, had a campaign called Save Our Pool. Um, within weeks, really, of finding out the place was going to close down, we managed to get 30,000 signatures. Now, you know the population of Glasgow. It's a fantastic feat. Um, the reason for this really is because Glasgow City Council had closed enormous amounts of swimming pools and wash houses over the years, and I think this was the final straw for a, for a lot of people, and so galvanised a lot of support. We became the, um, very, very importantly, um, very, very proud of this fact as well, um, the longest occupation of a civic building in British history with over 141 days uh, of continuous occupation. Our demands were uh, very simple. We didn't believe we were a cost to the uh, council um, or to the government. We believe that buildings like this are an investment in our health for generations. And buildings like this were established to address the holistic needs and well-being of communities and they provided more than just swimming, they provided a meeting place for disparate groups to come together, aiding social cohesion, as well as actually providing swimming um, and a whole range of other facilities. Um, we be believe that this building was built for the community and so it was an asset for future generations. And we also believe, very importantly, that it's not just the rich who are entitled to beautiful grand buildings, but working class communities as well. We always, our slogan was always, and is still today, ours. In August 2001, uh, one of the biggest mobilisations of the police for a community campaign uh, took place. Um, it was a violent uh, campaign, not from us, uh, but from, from the powers of being sheriff officers. If anyone knows the behaviour of sheriff's officers over the years, they will know how hated they are in working class communities. Um, so uh, they turned up and after an 18 hour standoff, they eventually got into the building. Um, we were uh, thus evicted. Um, in 2004, we didn't give up of course. In 2004, we established ourselves as a charitable trust and so the campaign had moved, not just the one for saving the building, but really to try and meet the aspirations of the community, which had moved on by then. And you can see from our uh, aim there, there was about the regeneration of the local area as much as it was about saving the building. Um, in 2012, we got back into the building, uh, only to the front foyer. Um, very generously by the support of local community groups who sacrificed £100,000 of their own funding to divert to us so we could actually open phase 1A of the building. Since 2012, we've generated an income, mainly grants, but also social enterprise activities of over a million pounds. We've had over 95,000 visitors that have come through our doors, engaged over 1,000 people in workshops and trainings, that go from six to 12 weeks, whole, whole, from archery um, right through to um, sewing and so on. Importantly, the people accessing this building are still very much from the local community and actually mirror the demographic nature of our community. Um, Rags to Riches has now been established as probably Scotland's most leading upcycling project. Um, we also are a major arts venue, which is at Sonica. Um, take place as one of our uh, one of the main venues there. Over 500 arts related activities have taken place and we've got our learners pool reopened um, bringing uh, swimming classes to toddlers and parents and people who've never 
if you've never swam before. Um, we also have very proudly a community archive. There are very, very community, very small amount of community archives present. We are hoping to join forces with other community groups to help them establish their own. We think our history is worth saving. Uh, we also are a lifeline really to about 70 groups who use our facility because so many places are being shut down. We're able to offer them cheaply and locally. Govan Hill, for people who don't know, is on the south side of Glasgow, just up the road there. It's one of the most congested communities in the whole of Western Europe. It's also a very highly deprived area. Very few council houses, mainly private owned. Probably seen a huge amount of information on, online and everywhere about campaigns against slum housing. It was only in 1985 that landlords were forced to actually have a bathroom and hot running water in properties. It tells you the conditions people were living in. It also has 300 times about the Scottish average um, hospital admissions for things like drug and alcohol addiction and very, very high levels of domestic violence. But it also is the most diverse community outside of London. Uh, we have 46 languages spoken by over 60 nationalities. It's been a place right from the Highland um, clearances to the uh, recent Roma people that have come as a place for immigrants to feel safe and welcome. It also has the highest um, uh, well, yes, it is actually uh, now the, high, the um, biggest Roma population in, in Scotland. And for a long time it used to be called Little Donegal because uh, it had a huge amount of people from Ireland living there and, and still do. Um, in 2016 we started the first phase, phase 1B of our um, development project costing 6.4 million. Um, it did cost four and then every year it increases because of inflation and the building is actually falling apart, 17 years of neglect. We've done our best but it's a massive building. Um, we consulted 10% of the population, a fantastic feat, um, and the asset transfer is happening. But uh, as, as you said, there's been delays at every level, not just the council. Um, we're hoping that our capital um, build commences in 2018 on schedule, but we still have £300,000 to raise. And I echo everything the previous speaker said about the Heritage Lottery Fund. They are difficult, and I think, yes, Everything you said, so I don't need to say that. Um, it's, we, we are mercy to their demands, but what can we say? Uh, the asset transfer is, is um, in progress. Uh, we don't want to own the building until we've got the funding, obviously. Uh, you can imagine the insurance and upgrade um, costs. Um, but in our case, we had to do a number of things which caused us a lot of time and, a, and a, a lot of energy. You have to remember that we're not specialists. My background is in, you know, I used to be a forklift driver. I am not uh, an expert in heritage buildings, but we all became experts in heritage buildings. Um, because of the nature of the VAT issues, something you might want to look at, I know you've got a modern building, but if you are saving or refurbishing a heritage building, VAT has changed, I'm afraid. Uh, you can no longer get the reduction in VAT that you once used to. It's only now for modern buildings, which means you have 20% added on. Now, we didn't have 20% added on to our costs until the law changed, and then we had to find the 20%, which means we've set up ourselves as a building preservation trust. Um, that means I could talk to people on an individual level, uh, probably because it's still happening at the moment. The Building Preservation Trust, a single issue one, they will buy the building off the Govan Hill Bars Community Trust, oversee the capital works and then sell the building back to us at market value. We are then only charged for the sale of that building rather than the capital works. It's a very complicated but I'm, I'm here to help if anyone wants to save you the bother of what we had to go through. Um, I can help there. Um, we also, to raise money quickly, had to consider a number of things, and one of them is, of course, the community shares, which I'm going to talk about while I'm having a chat. I'm going to distribute a very important little pamphlet, which I, if you are considering community shares, please have a look at. It's our share offer document, and it goes through everything you need to put into a share offer document and some leaflets. So they're heavy. Can I pass them around? Thank you. I should have done it at the beginning. So we set ourselves as a um, Govan Hill Community Benefit Society who will actually run the facility once the Preservation Trust sends it to us, sells it back to us, we will then lease it on a long-term basis to the Community Benefit Society. 
we were hoping to just run the building, but we've had to jump all these hurdles, not because we want to, but because of laws and regulations and so on. Um, this has caused a huge amount, as you can imagine. You have trouble trying to get people on one board. Imagine having three all of a sudden. Um, three business plans, uh, th you know, a share off a document you'll see there that we had to write. Um, and the Community Benefits Society is not a company um, registered with Companies Health. It's actually regulated by the FSA, which I don't know if anyone's ever worked with them. They are not uh, a straightforward, and we don't have, um, we have what's called <coughs> rules. Um, uh, and well, we've also had to become charitable for all those three organisations, which is a lot of paperwork. But anyway, we've done all of that managed all that, we had to do all of that in four months. So if you know how Oscar works, we just squeezed in there. Um, both the community, uh, both the DTA and uh, Community Share Scotland were able to help us with some finance, which was really, really appreciated because it is costing money and that picture's moved. Um, yeah, that's okay. So diving in, you'll see lots of metaphors and things around <coughs> swimming and diving and pooling together. Um, the reason we took up a share offer, a uh, community share offer, and they're not, they're not as common as you think. Um, basically, community shares are like, they're not like Donald Trump type style shares. They're shares that the community own which are withdrawable, so you invest. And after a period of time, um, you can withdraw them. Um, and you get one vote, regardless of how much money you actually put in. Um, and one of the reasons we considered community shares is because we've done all the things that you would normally do in terms of community fundraising, but when you need a massive influx of cash, this is the way uh, we thought we could, we could pursue. Um, and it's also about bringing people together who are going to actually own the building, rather than having a small board. This is about members. So everybody who is a shareholder is actually then an automatic member of the Community Benefits Society and gets a say um, in the strategic developments of that organisation as well as voting. Um, it also links the building to the community for the long term, which was really, really important to us. So there you see, in the short term, we need to demonstrate to the HLF and other funders that the Baths, people in the community were interested in investing in the Baths, um, also, we needed capital to bridge that loan, bridge that amount during the capital phase, which yeah, uh, required different things, which I don't want to go into now. But anyway, if anyone's interested in this, I can, I can uh, tell you about that, that, that bridging capital um, from one organisation to another. In the long term, of course, it means protecting our building for future generations. So community shares, we're making sure that anyone who wanted to and could afford to, over the age of 16, could buy community shares. Importantly, people could group together, uh, community organisations, community councils and so on, could also invest in the community. It's not just about individuals, but also you can buy these as a gift for uh, your children or, or family members that have passed away and love this building. You can only do 10% maximum of your share offer, um, so that was going to be 300,000, so 30,000 was the maximum anyone can contribute. No one's done that. Um, uh, 100 pounds were very, very conscious that it was actually going to be a lot for the majority of people who um, live in the area. Some of the, some of the advantages you get, because the Tory government's all about um, helping communities, uh, invest, um, businesses invest in communities because they can get something out of it. Uh, you get a 3% interest, uh, which is quite high, better than an ISA, uh, if you're interested. Um, and for the first 150,000 that's raised, you will get 50% tax relief. So if you've put in 1,000, you can claim 500. Do have a look at the leaflet, you might want to invest. Um, uh, relief, which is great. Um, but also, Big Society Capital, for those of you who are interested, will match fund. It's a government, uh, UK funded um, investment initiative for social enterprises. It match funds um, our share offer of up to 100,000. But you need to do quite a bit to get there. But it's, it's achievable. We've done it. You can do it as well. So one of the, some of the things we did was we had a launch with Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, we decorated the baths. We did 5,000 door-to-door leaflet drops. We are having a local business reception. We did a mass me social media campaign that's continuing. School bag drops are really good, guys. You just go to the principal and you say, can you put this in all the school bags? And they say, yes. And if you've got five or six schools, the parents always go through the kids' school bags, don't they? 
so the parents are going to uh, see them. Um, obviously, we have a database of users. We did a street presence, and we have a marketing officer. We managed to get a marketing officer funded by the big lottery, uh, part time, of course. I have to tell you, though, unless you're something very sexy that's going to bring you loads of money, you're going to struggle. Uh, distilleries, the two big ones that have raised huge amounts of money, and we're talking million, um, is uh, a hydro and uh, wind farm and distilleries, because you know you're going to be guaranteed loads of money are back, and they're you know they're, they're good business, they make good business sense. A, a swimming bar is in a deprived community. You're not going to be investing there to make loads of money, are you? It's about committing to the idea of a, uh, a community asset being retained in the community and benefiting the community in the long term. Um, the other thing is, we've set ours at 100. Um, any less than that would be struggling. We needed to raise a certain amount of money. Um, what that means is not everyone who wants to invest can afford to invest, which means you do restrict your membership. But we're looking at addressing that. And high-end investors, I'm sorry, but they're not really interested. We've tried. Um, a lot of them have their own charities now, on own philanthropic activities, which means they don't have to pay tax. And they're not really always interested in the community groups. Some of the positives, though, we've got one of the highest contributions um, um, in any crowdfunder. 243 at the moment, people have invested £100 or more. That's staggering when you consider the big people, like the distilleries and so on, getting similar amounts. Um, obviously, there's a real uh, love of this building, a real commitment by those who can afford it to actually invest. It's raised our profile significantly. It's also built a lot of capacity within our organisation and knowledge about these things. Um, and it has told us one thing. The community will invest, but they prefer to do it by direct debit every month on the long term. And that's what the information we've been given is. So we're hoping to, maybe in a couple of years' time, we can't do it for this, is to have a much more open um, thing like a direct debit that you contribute, you know, 20 or 10 or 5 pounds a month. Um, people are much more willing to do that. If you want to invest and you've heard all of this, please do. Uh, you'll help make our history and you'll make history, of course, by saving Govan Hill Baths. Um, yeah, I'll answer questions at the end. Okay. Thanks.